So for you guys who sat here and saw me mark it up, you guys saw that this chart is already marked up how I would normally mark a chart up. Now, what I'm gonna do for y'all is I'm gonna start off with a pattern and then I'm going to work backwards down to why you've been getting this pattern and entry techniques. Now, for you guys who are new, new, who are fresh face to trading, like fresh face as in haven't had your first shave yet, you know, baby faced out here, I am going to, um, like I said, I'll, I'll mark up a chart after I get to that because marking up a chart is extremely important. But um, what's more important is knowing why you're marking a chart up and where, where you put your markups at. Hold on real quick, let me turn this music off. Because I'm doing this on YouTube, I don't want no copyright crap. Um, so, like I was saying, I'm going to start off with the harm with harmonic patterns and then I'm gonna work backwards. I took my little notes earlier. Remember guys, it's always good to take notes. Even if you don't think you need them, even if you think that I remember everything, I want to remember this, take some notes. Like up until probably like a month ago, I was referring to my notes every single time, all the time. If I wasn't sure about a pattern and the parameters, I was going to my notes to check them just to make sure. This is the thing too, my, my session should help you guys differentiate between when to hop into a pattern and when to hop into a trade and when not to. Because a lot of people, they um, don't have a problem drawing their patterns, but the problem is when should I enter or when should I get out? Now, that is kind of like up to your discretion, but once you've been in the, um, once you've been doing this for a while, it shouldn't be a problem for you to get out. I mean, not really. I know a lot of people do, they do the Fibonacci, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, open up the chat and see the question. It says, quick question, do you base your TP1 based on, or oh, on exit at AD at, um, at 382. I do not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And what you guys will find is that when you market chart up real good, that your Fibonacci levels will line up with your um, levels of support and resistance. And you can hear me say support and resistance a lot of times. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm starting off with this with um, EJ, because I had a pattern drawn in here already. Not the two patterns you see right here that's whited out. Not these two. These two already happened. They already expired. They're, they're done. They're done, done. Done, done at all. So let me Matter of fact, give this web with some color. Yeah, these two patterns are done. There's a cipher pattern. It was a Gartley pattern. These patterns are already done already. Done, completed, finito. So I know you guys see that some of these, I need to talk on the extension. Um, no, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do this, how I would mark these up. So with these two patterns I have on here already, my take profit, oops, I not mean to do that. That's fine. My take profits, I, I mean, you could set them. That's your, your safe bet is to set them with the Fibonacci, but that's not what I do. And the reason why I don't do that is because I use my levels of support and resistance heavily when finding my take profits. And um, I'm going to show you bad boys how to do this. Now, with any, when I say any, I mean any pattern that you find, your first thing you always look for is an impulse leg. And if you don't know what an impulse leg is, I'm about to show you you're in for a treat. So. Go type it on the screen, matter of fact. And again, remember, for you guys who are new, if you feel lost, don't worry about it. I am going to work backwards from finding a pattern all the way down to marking a chart up and when I would hop in and stuff like that. So I'm going to do impulse lay. I know this is huge right now, so let me make this a little bit smaller. Bam. Impulse lay. This is your first move on any harmonic pattern. Now, you guys see I have lines crisscrossed. All, you know, it's all perfectly symmetrical. On here, you see these parallelograms all in the middle here and stuff like that. Probably heard that word in a long time, but um, yeah, you see it all on here. But it all makes sense. I'm sure you guys know why I do that stuff too. But your first move on any any pattern is a harmonic, and so oh no, I can't talk. Your first move on any harmonic is an impulse leg, and um, you guys see this Gartley over here. Matter of fact, I can just show you guys this Gartley and then show the cipher that is there's actually a cipher set up in this area right here. You guys might not see it yet, but I'm sure you guys the cipher and the Gartley. And this is a thing too with these patterns. The reason why, if you guys are new, it's so actually you guys are fresh face. If you guys are new to trading, it's good to learn harmonics because harmonics give you a, a strict set of rules to follow. Like if they don't follow this, it's not that pattern. And if you're looking for that pattern and this doesn't follow that rules of those patterns, don't hop in that pattern. Exactly. Exactly. No simple rules of Gartley will save your life, man. And this is the thing too is, even if like I used to, I used to have a little chart that I went to on Google and I found out um I was searching like rules of Gartley, rules of the bat, rules and stuff like that. 
and you go on Google and it pulls up a little chart that shows you like the parameters. Now, those parameters are pretty generic and if you don't know what it means, you're not gonna be able to read it in the first place. But if you do and you start practicing, you're like, oh, okay, I got this. The main thing with any of this stuff is practice, man, because no matter how much you do, you're not gonna just go in the game and be the best player. You have to practice. Like you're definitely gonna have to practice. I'm practicing these patterns for a while, especially the Gartley, but I'm not gonna talk about the Gartley all the time because that's what I do. But I'm not gonna just talk about it all the time. But since the Gartley's right here, I'm gonna fly through this Gartley real quick. Now, if for you guys who don't know, this line right here, I'm gonna make it real bold. Bam, that and this is a diagonal trend line. They're black because I drew these on a daily. Now, daily, yeah, see I race those are too broad. They are very broad. That's why I said they help, but what helps more is practice. Now you see, because you can find anything on Google. Literally, you can find anything on Google. And that's a good thing and that's a bad thing. And the reason why it's a bad thing is because you know who's getting it from. And this is the thing I tell anybody when they come to wanting to learn to trade. If you don't um if you don't have somebody who's been doing it to ask questions, how do you know the answers are right? Like if you just go to the again, this is the thing too. Remember in school where they gave you a math book and it's like, hey, do question one through 15. Then you go straight to the back of the book cheat and you're like, okay. Well, all, all the answers right here, I'm gonna copy all these odd answers, I'm gonna figure these even ones out. And the problem with that is, now if a teacher says, hey, do all the even numbers, then you're like, oh man, there's no answers in the back of the book for the even numbers. Now, if you would've took your time and learned how to actually solve those math problems, going to the back of the book trying to find help wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't save you all the time because if you're depending on someone giving you the answer all the time, you can't find the answer yourself, you can't, the thing that you hate, especially in school, is show your work. You can't show your work. You mean you don't know what you're doing. So, like I was saying, I know I'm answering a question in the group chat, too. For you guys who can't see it, it's a chat over here. But you guys can't see it. These two diagonal trend lines right here are daily levels. Now, these are key. Look at, look at the respect of those levels. But besides that, this Gartley pattern right here in the middle. I'm gonna rewind some time. Then I'm gonna go into the cipher pattern down here. Then I'm gonna show you guys the markup. So I'm gonna rewind this bad boy all the way here. This is what I drew this at. I'm actually gonna erase this. Bam. So if I come on here and I see that this is what I have, the first thing I look for is what I marked right here, the impulse leg. This impulse leg is key. Now, some people, sometimes they'll grab the impulse leg from a weird spot and they end up getting the a pattern that's not valid. And the reason why the pattern is not valid is because their impulse leg wasn't actually an impulse leg. Now, there's, there's different ways to do this. Some people would go up to like the daily and they will count all of this as an impulse leg. Which I mean, I guess if you're drawing this in a huge time frame, you can count it as an impulse leg. Makes a bat pattern invalid? No, we, we getting that. We're doing the garlic right now. Slow your roll. And make it invalid on what? Because you're saying A86 makes a bat invalid. We're at what point? At your B, at your C. This is the thing too. I know I keep saying this is the thing, but there's a lot of rules when it comes to doing this. One thing to remember: do not try to learn every single pattern at one time. I literally learned one pattern, added another, added another. I might add a fourth, but in all actuality, I um I was just I traded one pattern for a long time, then I added the um I added the bat and then I added the cipher. Actually, I added the cipher and then I added the bat. But don't try to learn every single pattern. You try to find everything, you're probably gonna end up finding nothing, which I know it sounds backwards, but it's true. If um you guys play football or basketball, I'm gonna say football, I play football, and the the coach calls a play and he says, Go run a route. He's like, Which route? Just grab pick one off the route tree. Are you probably are you getting the ball? Probably not. You know why? Because the quarterback don't know what play you're running, he don't know where you're running at. He needs to know what route you're running on the route tree. Pick that one route and run that route. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? You're going to go to film and they'll be like, what the hell were you doing? So, like I was saying, with this, um, <laughs> with this pattern, impulse leg, some people will go in here and consider all of this the impulse leg. Now, it depends on the time frame you're on. If this was all like one solid movement, I would. But take in all in consideration the information that's in front of you. I have a diagonal trend line right here. Now, what I do is, if I have moves that are like stair-stepping down like this, I wouldn't consider 
all of this one impulse leg, initially, I would first go and fib and see what I have. And the reason why you go and fib and see what you have is because you don't know what you're going to have. So I can grab them up here and fib and see what I got. Okay, price hit a, a 0.5, but I feel like there's information I'm skipping right here because you see how price consolidated right here in the middle. So what I would do is, okay, I see that, but I see a stronger, a stronger impulse leg right here. So I'm taking my fib from this point. You see how I wicked my diagonal trend line right here? It just wicked it. So I mean, it tapped it. Price is playing under that. Price was first playing above that for a while. I probably can draw another line right here too, but let me go back. I suppose I press control, not shift. Oops. Yeah, you see price is playing above this. And now we're all down here. And now it's below this. So I'm gonna erase this line right here though. Because you can sit here and do diagonal trend lines all over this thing, just like you could do horizontal trend lines all over this thing. But we ain't here for all that. I'm showing you guys the patterns right now. So what I'm doing is I'm now taking my, this is my first point of my impulse leg, my hypothetical A, my, my hypothetical X and my hypothetical A. And the reason why I say hypothetical is when you're first fitting it out, you don't know what pattern you have or even if you're going to have a pattern. Because if I'm, if I'm only a charts looking for a godly pattern and this makes a bat, I'm not, I mean, and I don't know what a bat is. I don't know the parameters of a bat. I'm not going to take it as a bat. I'm going to be like, okay, this pattern is invalid. I'm not taking this. That's the thing too. Don't try to force a pattern on a thing. I had to talk with, um, Steph earlier, I don't know if Steph is in one some group of you guys, but um, I had to talk with her earlier in the group chat about not overdoing it, not overthinking it. Trading is as hard as you make it, honestly. Like some people you will see, they'll come in here and they'll have, it'd be like a pattern. Then you'd be like, all right, I have a pattern right here. Oh, I have a possible pattern like this too. And I have a possible pattern that's coming through the middle of here. Now, at this point, you're looking for four different patterns or three different patterns in the same thing. It's, I feel like it's too much. You're overwhelming yourself with what could possibly happen, not what's actually there. At that point, you're trying to force a pattern onto it. Now, there are instances where you have a pattern set up and it's like, okay, this could be a cipher or this could be a Gartley or this could be the A or B. But at some point, I see people's charts and they have like six patterns on top of one. At that point, you don't know what price is going to do. Narrow it down. Take what the market gives you. That's the main advice I can I give anybody. Take what the markets give you. Because if not, if you're looking for everything, you're not going to find anything. So, again, I mean, I know it happens. It happens. And, and people still kill it doing it. But the problem be is that if you haven't been trading for a while and you're seeing all these eight patterns on here, you're like, oh, this could be this, this could be that, this could be this. If you, didn't, if you know all those patterns, I mean, you're looking for too much. It's, it's information overload. And then you get this thing called analysis paralysis. So you're like, okay, if I expect this to sell for this pattern, but buy for this pattern, what am I going to do? Now you give yourself too much information on what to do. Take what the market gives you. So my impulse leg, again, I'm going to keep starting over. This is my impulse leg now. Let me change this light blue. Right here, this light blue, this is my impulse leg. This is my hypothetical X right here, X being the first point on any pattern. Let's put hypo, I don't feel like it's hypothetical. I might spell that wrong. I want y'all laughing at me on here. It's hypo X and this is my um, hypothetical A. And again, the reason I say hypothetical is because I don't know if it's even gonna make a pattern at this point, but it might. So I'm taking my Fibonacci tool and I'm going from the exact, the end of this wick right here all the way to the bottom of this closure right here. Now, an advanced trader would see that this might be all you need to find a pattern, just one fib on a garlic. It might be all you need. But if you haven't been doing this for a while, you need more information. Now, there's a thing that I do that not everyone does. If my, for my garlic pattern, if my B point, which I'm gonna put hypothetical B, let me, oh no, not all that. Um, so, try this one more time. Give me this. Now, how I trade this is, if my B, if my B wicks 786, I'm fine. I'm still hopping in this. I'm going to drag this arrow over too without grabbing everything under the sun. Hypothetical B. Now, and the reason why I even do this is because I know some people are like, hey, don't do this, don't do that. 
The reason I, I don't I do this is because I have been trading this pattern so long. I know that if price barely wakes the 786 right here. Now I'm about to show you that. I'm about to show you all that. Calm down, calm down. I got you. This is my hypothetical B. Now my B needs to equal. My my B is my retracement for you guys who don't know. My B equals 618. Oops. To 786. And my 786 is wick but not close. Meaning the body of that candle, if the body of this candle goes past the 786, you guys see right here, I might make it a different color just so it stands out more. No, it's black line, just to hold up real quick. Oops, I need that. If it was a little delayed, I'll make this nice, bright, and let me see. That works. So you guys see that my 786 is going to be, I'll make it red, matter of fact. It makes more sense. It's not a bright red, though. Why does it look so dull? It doesn't matter. You guys see the 786 right there in red. So this is my range right here from where my B can be at. Now I change the color of this box, too. This is my range right here. This is my, my money zone for B. Now, again, that's that little wick that, little wick that peaks past 786. I would still take that because it's not like, it's not like price went like all the way. Yeah, not that far, obviously. Not like price went all the way to the moon on here and is wicking all the way to like 886. Let me change this to take the extensions off. Bam. It's not like price wick like that, or even like this, or even like that close to 886. If this price wicks right past 786, I'm still taking this as a garlic because price is still in my it's still in my entry zone. The, there's no close of price in that entry zone. So now my next fib is going to be I just erase. Oh, are you doubled up? They are doubled up. So now my next fib is going hypothetical A still to the end of where B actually was at. Right there. So this is my, my next fib. Y'all swear I'm going to struggle bust today. My next fib is A to B. You're looking for this window. Next fit is A to B. Look for your window of a minimum of 618. Like that's bare minimum is 618. That's what you need. Let me do some algebra for y'all real quick. We'll see. C is 618 minimum one at the maximum now the the money zone where you'll see that when it's regardly where b will not be where c usually is at c usually falls right here this is usually where it's at honestly like on the most gartley you see me drop or anything like that you'll see that your c is right between 786 or 886 it'll wick one of those two but the reason why i say a 618 minimum is because if you see price like turning turning and it's right here well, let's say you catch this, this pattern and price is like already up here somewhere. The Gartley is still valid. Up here meaning that this piece right here didn't happen yet. But price is already up here like making this move up. That Gartley is still valid, still valid because all you need is a 618 minimum. You see at 618, it bounced off a little bit. Nah. I don't know, I don't know where that 382 came from, but um, nah. It's not, it's not either or. It's, it's, a, it's a range you got. Like I say, if, if that if that parameter right there came from the internet, don't listen to that. Hey, Ray just dropped in the chat. Don't listen to my internet people now. Don't listen to them because they they have you all misconstrued and, and lost out here. I'm telling you what um what I've seen that worked. If you have a Gartley, your C point is at like 382. Your C point is only right here. I'm not taking that. 
Like that's that's not a it's not a big move at all. Look how big this impulse move was right here on a retracement. And then if you're a C like only retraces like less than half of that, like no, nah, I'm not I'm not taking it at all. I need that 618 minimum to one. One meaning that again, if price goes down, if price comes down all the way down here and test this trend line, like in this general area, I'm still good as long as it does not go past my A. Because if my C goes past my A, it's an invalid pattern on me. Well, uh, it, might be, it might be a pattern, but it's not gonna be a Gartley pattern, is what it is. So let me draw my box of my valid Cs, which is right here to there. So from me having this right here, I can now take my next fib, which is my next to last fib, why are you just doubling up for? Which is my, my same first fib, which is going the tip of this to the bottom of this A. Let me put, let me first copy this. This for my hypo C. You guys know what the hypo means, so. Hypothetical C. Oh, am I tripping? I really am struggling today. I don't know why. There you go, hypothetical C. Yeah, the parameters up here. Why is everything doubled? Okay, we're good now. No more doubles. So how I find D. Um, my D on D I'm looking for there's a range. 786. Now I know you probably, yeah, definitely redo your notes, man. If you're looking for your C to be a 382, nah, that's that's not where it's at. Now on the Gartley, this is the, the parameters I take. I need my C, I need my, my D point to be between the 786 to one. Now just know at the completion of the harmonic pattern, price might, you know, news might hit and then price might wick like up here. Like if, if price starts wicking up here, but your pattern is drawn to your entry zone right here, enter that trade, man. Um, one thing I advise you guys do also, Trust your analysis. Now, I know people might have a different markup than you. People can have anything to you. If you trust your analysis, and let's say you lose a trade, it happens. If you have a pattern and it fits your parameters perfectly, but then it goes sideways on you and it just goes like out the, it hits your stop loss, it happens, man. Losses come with wins, they go hand in hand. If you win everything that you go in all the time, you I mean, it, it, I can tell you right now, it ain't gonna happen. It definitely ain't gonna happen. So get ready to take some L's because it's going to happen. But I'm telling you guys how to avoid some of those. Make sure your rules are right. Make sure your, um, your trend lines are right. Your diagonal trend lines are right. Make sure your fib is on point. Make sure all your stuff is on point. You're not using some, some fugazi, um, just some, some fugazi parameters for your own thing. D retracement is X to A. Yeah, it's the same first fib that you took. It's X to A. So you're looking for this 786 to 1 zone. Now, but there is a, there's a sweet spot for this. So I took my first fib, which is 786 to one. Let me go to, let me copy this real quick up here. I'm gonna go to fib x to a. This is how you get d. And d equals, now I know some people will even take d from 618. I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not a fan of that. There you go, that's your next one. Let me erase this. So now that I have this, even though price is still at C or a little past C, I can now draw my pattern. Just based, oh, I lie, one more fib. My last, my, my last, last fib is going from B, from the tip of B. See where B is at, this little wick, I'm grabbing right on top of that, and I'm going down to where C is at. And now I'm looking for a one, two, seven, two. So my, my money spot, even though I have my zone here, my money spot is between this 886 and this 1272. That's my, like my ideal entry. So I don't like that. That makes it a completely different color. Bam, that's my money spot. So as soon as price touches the bottom of this box right here, I'm in this trade. So now that I have all this information, I can erase these fibs. They're all like doubled up right now. I can erase these fibs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one more time. I'm going to go fib. You fib in B to C, 
oops, erase fib B, struggle bus, remember that. B to C to get D, again, well, I'm gonna say money spot on D. Well, I'm gonna leave it as D. So look for the 1272 to 886 zone of, of both of those fibs. Now that I have all this information, I can go and, actually I left this fib right here on here. I can go and draw this bad boy out now. So what I'll do is take my tool over here and I'm going X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D. And what I do with this right here, I'm putting this right at the bottom of this box because as soon as price taps this, I'm in this. Matter of fact, if you want to, you can, you can get aggressive with it and as soon as price taps to 786, you're in this trade. I'm putting mine right on this, on this corner of this um, right here. Yes, you can always relocate to C. As long as your C does not do this. As long as it doesn't go under. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Do me a favor. Um, that didn't help at all, did it? But as long as your C doesn't go under your A, you're still fine. C can line up with A perfectly. It can do all that stuff it wants to do. But as long as it does not. There you go. As long as it does not go under A, you're good. So now I have all the information. Let me erase some of these boxes off of here. I have my impulse leg. I have my X, my A, my B, and my C, and my potential D where it's gonna go. Like I said, if you get aggressive, you can hop in this cell. Remember, if you, if you do harmonics, you will know that if, you're, if D is up, your take properties are down. So that means it's gonna be a cell. So if you guys use a harmonic scanner or anything like that, if you see a cell like this, if you see, Price like this, your D is in the air. That sounds crazy, but you guys know what I mean. If you see this in the air like that, um, you know you're looking for a sell. So let me look, let me look at the harmonic scanner real quick. Bam, that's how it probably look. And I want to erase this one. So now that I have this, I can um, play this out. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do stop loss. So one thing I definitely learned from Ray, I know you guys know exactly who Ray is. One thing I learned from Ray is the stop loss area. You know, before I was just putting my stop loss and my levels of support and resistance. I'm gonna draw a quick line real quick. I have a level right here. That's a very thin line. So you guys can see it, I make it nice and bold. So I have a level right there. Remember all these straight lines in here, all these levels of support and resistance are actually zones, not just a straight line. It's probably like more of a zone right here. It's more of a zone like this. So this is a zone where price doesn't wanna be more than it is a point where price doesn't wanna be. This is all a zone right here in the middle. So if, I just, if I'm using my level of support and resistance to use as my zone for my stop loss, my price might possibly hit stop loss. So what Ray does is, he's putting this, this stop loss above 113. And the reason is, I went back and back tested and see that price, a lot of times, if you see price go crazy for a news move or something like that, it goes right to 113 or right in that 113 area. So what I probably will actually do is put my stop like, up here, it'd be above this. Maybe clear this. It wouldn't be the one two seven two. I feel one two seven two is too far, but that one one three area it gets tapped a lot when price pushes real hard. Now I'm going to show you exactly how it works. The garlic is just a harmonic pattern, just like all the rest of the harmonic patterns are. It it predicts price turnaround at a certain point, and the point usually is between the seven eighty six and one. So now that I did that. I'm gonna make this, this line here red real quick. This is gonna be my stop loss. You guys can see my stop will be like right here. But as soon as price taps right here, I'm getting this bad boy for a sell. So now let me show you what happened on this. Now remember you asked about adjusting your C? You see how price came down a little bit? This is still fine. I mean, it's not past my A. I'm fine. If I, if I, if I decide to get in this, this bad boy early and was in a buy, I'm still staying in this. This is dropped down like maybe five pips for my entry. So let this bad boy play out. And look what happened when price got up there. You see when price got in that in that orange box? Now on this one, it did not exactly tap my 886. If I got aggressive with this, which I did get in the cell when it was at 786, and you see how just as soon as you get in this box, I'm aggressive with it. So I'm selling this. So if it goes to 886, I'm hopping in again for a sell. So I know my entry zone is from 786 all the way up to one. So as soon as price gets in that box, I'm I'm selling that bad boy.
Now, it happened to be that you see how I have these two diagonal trend lines again. I'm going to show you guys again how to do this because these diagonal trend lines, they, they're, they're definitely respected, especially when you draw them on a daily time frame. Now, look at, this, look at these lines. This diagonal trend line right here, this is bolder to get, so my bad. This diagonal trend line right here is on a daily. So this bottom one is on the daily. You can kind of see the price is playing zigzag. It's tapping, it's tapping, it's tapping. So when I expect, when I see price get the top of this channel, even though it wicked out of it, it dropped right back into it. Even the bottom of my whole move on this garlic is at the bottom of this, um, of this channel, of this diagonal trend line. You see it? So price is like when it's in there, it's in there dancing around. And so while I was in there dancing around, my B point was almost at the top of this diagonal trend line. And it dropped back down. I almost hit the bottom of it. So this whole time when price is dancing around in the middle, I have more confirmation that if price stays into this, this thing, like how it wicked up there and dropped back down, I know I'm good for the sell. So me getting in right here, that's still 170 pips down. Like that's, that's a pretty good move right there just based off this one pattern. Nothing extra, nothing complicated. Just one pattern. And it, it, it went for a nice move. And I had confirmation because it's in my entry zone. It did not go up here past my X anywhere. It's, it's still, it wicked my um, diagonal trend line, but not like it didn't close up here past it anywhere. So I'm good. And in actuality, I have another line right here too. I have a diagonal daily level right here. And this is a pretty powerful level because again, my black lines are daily levels. So by me seeing this, all those coming to confluence, like price met right there and price stayed under it. So like I'm just using, I'm using my information for confirmation. That's the best thing you can do. Use your information for confirmation because use all the stuff that you know for confirmation. So hold on, let me move this over because I know it's all jumbled. Hope you guys took some notes on that just now because I know I was talking fast through it. But the guard does not predict price impulse. It, pre it predicts re retracement or turnaround is what it does. I have a rule that if my Gartley is deep, like I can get, show you guys an example. Um, my take profits would be, <clears throat> matter of fact, you see how I have this level right here? You guys can see it. Oh, that's a very ugly. It's a level right here. Now I know I just drew a line in here, but it's a little level right here. That was my first take profit. And the reason why that would be is because price playing under here, you can see that price was sitting on support right here and resistance on the right. So you see how this little level of support? So that's my, that's my take profit right there. Price taps that, that's my TP1. And once my TP1 gets, um, gets tapped, if I have two um, entries, even if I have one, what I'm doing is just moving my, um, moving my stop loss to break even or to right here, and then I'm, I'm letting this bad boy ride. And this is the danger of sometimes moving your, um, your stop loss down too quick and not to break even. Because see, you see this retracement right here on this, how it pushed back up right to that. You'd have been taken out of this in profit, but you'd have been taken out. And then it went down for another like 100 pips. So you can move, you can move your um, stop loss to break even at that point, you're trading for free. You're not, you're not risking any, any loss on this trade. So let me let this finish playing out. And it should be about to be done in a second. Yep, and it's done. So that was the Gartley pattern. And I can show you guys. Yeah, I, I literally use levels of support and resistance to place my, my stop. Well, my stop loss always goes above 113 now. And that's always because it seems to be that price likes to go there. I'm going to my real charts and you can see the massacre I have of um, markups on here. But it matters not because um, I'll show you guys how this works. So for instance, this is gold. I dropped this pattern, was it yesterday, I want to say? This is a Gartley pattern right here in the middle of gold. You see it? This is a Gartley. Let me drag this and see. Yes, it was a Gartley pattern in the middle of gold. You see that I grabbed from this impulse leg right here, my X to my A, it's still marked up. My B, it tapped 618, so I'm fine. My B is valid. My C point, now this, there's multiple points over here. I'm grabbing the lowest one. Because if my lowest point goes, ben goes beneath A, but I grab from a higher point, it's still invalid. So what I do is on this is I'm grabbing my lowest point on this side as my C. 
And I actually did get in this trade for a sale. And um, my window for entry, where's my box at? My window for entry is 786 to one right here. So on this, my stop loss, I keep it above 113. My stop loss is up here. Even though I know it's all this information up here, but it's one of those things where when you've been trading for a while, you go back and I just look, I'm just gonna zoom all the way out. It's a 15 minute um, pattern. So I'm gonna zoom all the way out to the daily. And I know it looks like crap right now, but um, looking over here, oops, looking on all of this daily, now, price is at a stupid high high. And this wick right here is like probably one of the highest points in recent time. Let me zoom all the way out. Where are we even at on here? Where, where's my line at? We're over here. Now, the last time price was in this zone, you see it? This was April 2013. This is a high high. So even if price is going to still push up, me drawing a one minute or 15 minute pattern like that, <clears throat> it's fine because I mean price is gonna have to sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy in the zones like this price being this high this is like it's nearly some of the highest highs of gold of where gold has been ever looks like yeah this is the highest gold has ever been right here and this is 2011 last time it's been in this general zone up here was 2000, 2013 so I'm looking at this one right like okay this is a pretty powerful zone right here in the middle and price is right above it and let me zoom back into this on a 15 minute bow so remember all this is that same zone price is already peaking up there and dipping back down so my impulse leg if price decides it wants to go up here and make new highs above my x and above the 113 i'm out just trading i'd take that l is what i do but since price hit my um my entry zone my take profit on this was my next level now you see my next level is this black daily level right here in the middle this was my take profit on this you see it i'm gonna take profit right there the reason why i did this here i have a level drawn now i drew this take profit before any of this stuff on the right happened so if i wrote, replay this also this pattern was drawn when price was like i want to say right here it was like right at it so i had this level already drawn this black daily level you see i have a high point right there where price wicked that on a four trend line all you need is two valid touches but if i drag this to the left there's a lot of touches on the same line right here matter of fact no i'm not gonna do that but there's a lot of touches on this line right here so even my even my b point it wicked the same line and then you see there is this was resistance resistance same point resistance resistance one thing of knowing trend lines that this will teach you is that when price breaks resistance that resistance is either either it's going to it's an anomaly move or when it breaks it's going to find support somewhere above it now when it's a when, it's, when price has been in a high like this when price breaks this it's probably gonna come back down to support now look at this also more information again this right here is a daily diagonal trend line same thing i had on my last one so let's let this bad boy play out my stop loss is up here if it hits it hits i'll take that l but my take profit is right here right right in the middle where support was last found so look at that price stayed price stayed in that entry box the whole time it dropped down like 50 pips from entry it rode this trend line and look at that it smacked the take profit And you see how these diagonal trend lines come into play. Look how price respected that. It came back to it a few times. Even when it peaked above it, it dropped back down from it. And this is what gold is at right now. So that, that's how I use that. Like I use, I use my levels as my, my take profit. I'm pretty sure if I fib this out, I probably can fib this out and get like a nice clean level. People like their stuff being clean or their charts being clean. I have this bad boy ugly, but when I when I drop the chart, I clean it up a little bit. So, so from here, look where that same level is at for my entry. What leg is there a trace on? Just now, when I drew this out just now, I just went from C to D from my entry of D. I probably should draw this from where D actually went to, which would have been up here almost to one, but it matters not because. Let me go back to my entry. So look at this. My 32 is blue right here. 
look where this 382 is at. If I use my 382 as my take profit, it would have I would have had the same result. Like literally the same exact result. Good old almost 70 pip move down. You see, I mean you can you can go in here, the one before you were at stop loss. Oh, you're talking about the, the uh, that's the regular fib. That's just the X to A. That's the yeah, that's the X to A. The reason I use that and not X to C, my C should never be lower than my A is. Like never. Especially not in the garlic. It can be lower on a shark, it can be lower on uh, um it can be lower on a cipher, but never on a bat, never on a garlic. Since I'm showing you guys the garlic, your C should never be lower than your A is. I can erase this. This is my main chart. But you guys see how these levels are respected like over and over. So now that I have went through and show you guys some, let me show you another, another example. I got so many patterns on my charts. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's another good example right here on UJ. So UJ, I drew this pattern. If you guys can tell, I drew this pattern way when price was, let me rewind you. Price was all the way over here when I drew this pattern. So I drew this pattern out. It's the same same exact thing. Let me make sure this is a garlic first. I'm pretty sure it is. It is. Look at that. You see my X to A, my impulse leg, my B is in my zone right here. My 786 to my um, my 618 to my 786. It didn't it didn't close or it didn't touch 76 this this time. So my aggressive entry zone is 786, but my uh, rear entry, my rear entry zone was 886. I think I have the drawing disc because I have my B. If I fit my B to C to get my money spot, yeah, I, what I did was I put I, I put D right in the middle of that 1272 in zone. Now know that this red line right here is the level that I drew on my um on my 15 minutes. That's why it's red for. I usually don't draw lines on 15 minutes, but since I drew one on 15 minutes, I made this one red. Just to differentiate it from the black, gold, and green lines that we use. Black is for daily, gold is for four hour, green is for one hour. So, by me doing this, I have my purple entry zone up here drawn. So I know when price hits this zone, I got my um my pending set, I'm being the sell. My pending being my um my sell limit. So all my stuff's fibbed out, you know doing this thug dizzle. So let's play this bad boy out and see what happened. You guys already saw it happen, but this one took a while. All this consolidation playing around, playing around, playing around. But when you set a pending, by the time that price gets up there, let me, let me stop right there before it even get, it goes down and turns around. Now, by me setting my pending, I'm in this cell as soon as price gets down there. Like as soon as price, as soon as price taps this zone at this purple box up here, I'm in this trade. Like at the bottom of it, just in case it decides it wants to tap at 786 and turn around. The reason why I had it drawn up here, that's my money spot was at. And look, it actually wicked 886 and dropped. So at this point, I'm in this trade with like no drawdown. I want to say my take profit on this one was. Oh, yeah, it was. My take profit from this one was right here. Now, the reason it's right here is, again, look at the information you have. You have the last, your last level of resistance right here in the middle. You know that price is going to, when price finally breaks this, you see it was dancing, dancing, dancing. So when price, when price, when price finally breaks this, it's going to come back down and retest it. And this is exactly what you had in this area right here. This is your, let me fix that again because it always does that. It's trying to embarrass me in front of y'all. I don't appreciate that. Let me make this blue. Well, I'll make it purple. This is not thick enough, but this is your um, break of that level right here. This, this purple line is your break. You see it? It came up here, hit resistance at, at my, my entry zone, and went right back down to find support at that same level. So at this point, I'm out the trade. My take profits got hit, I'm good. So when all this right here happens after it, all this right here happens, matters not, I'm not in this trade anymore. I secured the bag and I left. 
I came and conquer, and I did. So, I mean, like, literally, don't make this trading harder than it has to be. Like, it's literally just that simple. Use the information that's there and, and go by that. So, I mean, I could, again, let me erase this fib off here. I'm fibbing this bad boy from C. Which my C probably should be right here. That one's like a, ha a hairline lower than that. You said new support and resistance um, for TB. That's that's what I use. Some people will just do this. It is a graph from here, and where your price is actually. Oh, I enter the trade right here. You can look where, look where that look where that first stop was at three eighty two. Look what that seven. Look what that second stop was at six one eight. That's people will do your take profit one, take profit two. Because look how on point like the fib. Like when your when your stuff lines up right, the fib is going to help you. Look at that, 618. Look at that, 382. That would be your take profit one and your take profit two if you use the FIB. You see how that lines up almost perfectly? So even though I don't FIB it, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this so so long and so much, looking at these charts so much that you kind of can eyeball it. Like, I can come on here and see a movement like, okay, I'm pretty sure this is not, this B is going to be too high to be a garlic. Or this C point is too low to make a garlic. Or the C part, this C part is too short to make a garlic. Yeah, that's a retrace from C to D. Because remember, all this stuff is just fib retracements. Like, that's all All these moves are, just fib retracements. Yeah, take these notes, man. That's what, that's what I'm here for. Take the notes. But you see how that lines up, like, perfectly? When your levels are right and your, um, your, your, your harmonics are right, they're going to they're gonna line up with your, um, with your chart. It might not be, like, perfectly... Because remember, these these per these straight lines right here are zones, not like a straight perfect straight line. Let me see what else I might have. Uh, that's gold. We just went over that one. This little tiny pattern right here took forever to complete, but guess what it did? It completed. Let me see something real quick. Now look at this. This one came right to that 113. That's why I said stop loss goes below that. Look where it came at. It came right to 113 and turned around. So the whole, this is a very small pattern too. This is a small pattern and a bigger pattern, but it took a while to complete. And if you set your take profit, let me go, let me erase this. Like I said, this pattern right here is super tiny. This one is one that you put a, a monster lot on, let, let that bad boy go. But, um, this wouldn't have hit any of your take profits. It wouldn't have hit the 32. It wouldn't have hit the 618 because it's so small. It hit the two the, um 0.23, and then it went right to that 113, and then turned around and got your full your full movement that you wanted. That's why I said that um I learned that from Ray. Like even though I've been trading this, like we all are still students. If I see something that Ray's teaching and it's working, I'm like, hey, I'm I'm on that. That works. I'm definitely doing that. So you guys see how that works, right? That um one one three got tapped and then price turned around. So that's my stop loss is, is beyond that one one three. Let me see something real quick. I see another got you right there. To my right here in the middle. I don't like this one. This is actually it. That's it doesn't even fib out. It doesn't, doesn't even hit it. Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me see something real quick. Is there news? Was it Thursday? There is this news at 9 30 for AUD. I ain't gonna be over here this long, but I'm letting you guys know there's news coming up. You know, what? I'm, I'm, I'm not actually not gonna do I'm actually not going to cover this. Um, I'm not covering the cipher today. I'm gonna let this stick at the garlic today just because I feel like you know. I don't want you guys going here trying to do every single pattern all the time. That's the thing I'm trying to avoid is people getting getting pattern overload trying to do everything. But there actually is a cipher forming up on this right here, on this one. I might just do it. I might just draw it just because you guys are on here to see what this pending order looks like. So same thing, impulse leg. The cipher is a little bit different for the parameters go. That draws from right here. Let me see. Yeah, you draw from right there. Okay. Some draw this pattern is super fast. 
I'm pretty sure Ray probably has this one too. Oops, I'm stupid. And no, I'm not. I'm not covering this one to see parameters. I'm just seeing where this um where this lines up at. Before you guys ask, what's the parameter of a cipher? Just to see where this is at. So this might actually line up perfectly. So I got my X to A. It should be right here. Bam and. I don't know how long it's going to take to get over here, but it's my 786 is right there. So we're going to see. I might actually end up tapping this line somewhere and then turn it around. Yeah, C lower than A. Yeah, this is a different pattern. This is not a Gartley at all. So I said I'm not going to set the parameters on this one. Don't worry about this one. That is not a Gartley pattern at all. That's a whole different whole different ballpark. But um, don't worry about that right now. Again, learn, you know, y'all learn that was one at a time. And this is uh, another one. This one went real nice. I'm gonna give you guys another example of the stop loss thing I was talking about. Let me actually put this in the right spot where it's supposed to be at. Now let me drag this X to A. You see that A and C are like in the same exact spot, but C did not go past it. I think it depends on your broker if C went past it or not. But um. I actually didn't readjust this afterwards. I actually drew this pattern way before this move down even happened. So my original C, my original C was right here. And then it, and then price pushed up, so I adjusted my C. I said, as long as C doesn't go up here somewhere like like past A, I'm good. Yeah, it's still valid. That one on one is still valid. And so you see this A86 right here, where price is at. Let me go and you see it's in the middle of this box to my B point right there. And so now I'm going B to C. That box actually for my 1272 and A86 is right here. Perfect entry on there. And look where price, it wicked down almost to 113. And then it turned around and popped up. Almost 40 pips on the pop up. So I mean, again, you see why that's sort of stop loss goes below 113 because price came so close to that 113. And look how, again, I have trend lines on here. See these diagonal trend lines, they're gold. That means that you're, I drew these on the four hour. And look how price just respected that. Like every, every move, it respected the trend line. Respected the trend line, meaning that, meaning that price just wicked past it and came right back to it. And even here, all this information right here. Look how price just wicking that trend line. Respect, 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 respect. It broke it, came back up to it. Now it's, now it's on the bottom of this trend line. So, even with diagonal trend lines, it works the same way. Right here, this was support on this diagonal trend line. And right here, it was, it was resistance. You see how price is playing under it? It's just literally the same thing, support and resistance. That's like the, the base of it all. And look how price respected all this is under that movement. Like all is under that movement. So, I don't know if you guys have any more questions, but this will be recorded if you guys do you have questions about the setups and stuff like that? That's the reason why I record these for. Are we recording these now? I have a YouTube channel. I will be dropping the link. My YouTube is actually El Modern Trades, the same as my Instagram. My YouTube. My IG is, well, actually, just keep it simple. My um, my everything is El Modern Trades. If you go on Facebook and type in El Modern Trades, it's gonna pull me up. If you go on Instagram and type in El Modern Trades, it's gonna pull me up. If you go on Instagram and search hashtag El Modern Trades, it's gonna pull me up. Like it's El Modern Trades on everything. So you know, if you guys have any questions, I'm hopping off this bad boy. I hope you guys got some value and took some notes. I know like half the class left in the middle of it. I don't know where they went at. <laughs> it matters not. It's recorded. Um, I will holla at y'all next time. I'm going to stop record first. Holla at y'all next time. And um, like I said, <laughs> we get the snapback though. This is not a snapback. This is actually a test hat. This is a test run of my Gartley hat. Best believe some snapbacks is coming. Might make some winter hats too. I got, I mean like Gartley shirts, all kind of stuff, man. I got Gartley on my, um, on my debit card. I got y'all though. I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to be dropping merch. But um yeah, I'll holler at y'all, man. Let me um end this recording real quick.